Okay, I thought I'd do a quick little video here about soldering irons, what I've learned about them. I've been looking around in the last few months for first for hot tweezers and um, also I've been looking for soldering irons and I've come to the conclusion that there are several different types on the market and I thought I would share what I have learned about it. So in any case, what I have found out is that if you go back probably to the 1990s right up until uh, the 2000s, and in fact you can still buy them, you will see that you have soldering irons that are like this. They have a ceramic heating element in them and this is this is a heating element and they have two wires for the heater and two wires for the thermocouple, the, the temperature sensor. And this is one here of that type. And if you open it up, and they're all the same, and they're, they're sold by various different manufacturers, including Weller and Hacko still. And they have tips, and I've got a help package of them over here. Um, tips are cheap, you can buy a whole bunch of those, like for $15. However, these things have problems. They are old technology and I do no longer recommend to anyone to buy these. Uh, for a start, the heating element in this sleeve is a loose fit. It's kind of like you know, sloppy as you can see. There is like 0.35 millimeters distance between the, the heating element and the metal of this tip. And that means that when you, if you are trying to solder a on a ground plane or something like that, there is a delay between when the signal goes to the um, to this thermocouple. And I made up a little drawing here to show how that works. Just hold on, I'll get it. But this is a, a little bit of a, a rough drawing of what, what these things actually are like. They have um, a heating element which is represented by this resistor here because it's a resistive heating element. And then there is a thermocouple over there which is brought out on these uh, blue wires on this particular one. And this here represents the ceramic um, sleeve that these things are sitting in. And as you can see there's a dis different distance between the heating element and the thermocouple and also the actual tip is not a tight fit around the ceramic of the heating element. And so these are all uh, barriers to getting the heat from the tip, you know, from the heater to the tip. And you'll find also with these, uh, many of them have a, um, a little light on them, like a, a little LED that flashes on when there's heating and off. And you'll notice when you um, present the, the the tip to a like a, a ground plane that takes us a lot of heat, you'll you will you will think it stays on all the time, but it doesn't. You'll still see it flashing on and off because there is a delay between when it senses that the heat is too low and it turns on and then this heats up quicker in here than the tip does and so they have limitations these things. You will see that this is the type of soldering iron that we're talking about and it's still being sold by this company here and they are cheaper. They cost like a hundred and four dollars and ninety five cents. And then we find that uh, Weller also has a similar thing here, which is uh, also of that in that in that nature. It's one hundred and two seventy seven. Uh, and these are the type of uh, soldering irons, you know, that we're talking about. I personally don't recommend these uh, unless you're really on a budget and, and you can't afford any, any more. 
But you can, of course, you can buy these things probably on AliExpress for half that price, maybe thirty, forty, fifty dollars. Um, so it all, it all depends, you know, what, what your budget is and how um, how much uh, micro soldering or, or small work that you do that these things are not not great for. Now the next technology, and I I think that it actually was uh, these are T12 tips that go into these things, and I think it was was it Hakko that actually came out with those some years ago. I'm not 100% sure. These guys are a generation ahead of of the of these guys here. Now another thing that you will notice is that the distance between the tip and the bodies when when you are holding it is much longer than like these and uh, also these uh, more modern ones over here they all have a much shorter reach from the tip to the to the handle where you can comfortably hold it that is important also that's another limitation of these guys if you are doing soldering you know on a under a microscope on a micro soldering or something any small movement equates to a large movement under the microscope so the sh shorter that that is the better the better that it suits micro soldering so these guys here that's another limitation that they have and of course another thing that um is bothersome with these is like if you want to change you know you, you're soldering some large components or something or, or connectors with the big tip here and you want to switch to one of these small tips one of these small tips you would have to this whole thing would be hot you just somehow have to unscrew this and take it off and remove the the tip put the other tip on and then screw that back on which is quite a bother to do especially if it's hot um, whereas these modern ones here you can just pull them out and plug in another one and you you're done and this body doesn't tend to get as hot as what the the whole body does on the um, the other one because the heating is done right inside here in any case these are the uh, so-called T12 and as you can see over here I have a whole bunch of these T12 uh, inserts different tips there smaller ones these kind of um, little pointy ones for getting into connectors and, and very small components and so on and they work very well these have uh, this little workstation here is like a kit that I bought and I put it together uh, I actually uh, have a video where I built another one a little bit different than this one but it's, it is exactly the same inside that um, I will put a link in the uh, description these guys run on 24 volts and they have 3 amps so they got 72 watts in the uh, soldering iron and they work very well this if you buy them as a kit you can actually buy these for um, I think I paid like $34 but everything has gone up so much just in the last few months they're probably $40 now or something or you can actually buy a ready-made one as an example of a T12 little workstation this is the one that you would want to get you know sixty dollars fifty eight ninety nine plus some tech and uh, it seems to has it seems to have the right kind of handle with it if you buy the kits 
um, you'll end up with a useless handle. You still you would still have to buy it. So I would think that this is actually the best way to get it. Uh, it even has a five dollar coupon right now, fifty three dollars ninety nine. These these work very well. And you can even, as I said, you can buy them as kits on AliExpress. And you can even, um, let me see now. There is actually an article on Circuit Digest on how to build your own. They go right into the details of the the circuits there. This is a T12 based. Um, they discuss, you know, why these things are better than the old technology ones, as I said. They have inside the heating core and the sensor and everything, it's all different layers that are connected together. There's no air gaps, no ceramic um, layer that actually is a barrier to thermal conductivity. And that's why these T12 tips work a lot better. And they also discuss here, it's interesting these, um, these T12 cartridges here, they have only three connections. There is the body, which is grounded, and then there's two connections, plus and minus. And that is used for the heater, but it's also used to sense the thermocouple output. And in order to do that, you actually have to switch the heater off and then read it. And so that's why. These things tend to have a little microcontroller. They're using an Atimega 328P here, but you can, of course, use any one of them, even an Arduino if you wanted to. That's the PCB. So, and they do um, offer a little switch there so it knows when you as a tilt switch, so it knows when, when the soldering iron is being lifted and then the heating element can heat up and when you put it down, it can be lowered down after a time period. The software for it, there is a GitHub thing. So anyway, so if you're that way inclined, you can actually build your own. So then the next thing up is actually uh, similar to that um, at 10 folding station that I bought. They have, these are sort of the latest technology ones. They have these, as I said, they also have uh, inserts in them. This one here is actually um, looks like that. And I have several different uh, tips for this one as well. And the actual base for it over here, a bit hard to see because it's all black, but you actually have a, uh, uh, oh, it's over here, a section here that you can actually uh, pull it out with. So you don't have to get, you don't have to get your, um, if it's hot, and then they stick up in there. <laughs> so they will set up for the, um, to make that easy, which tips. And they come in different sizes. Um, I'm waiting for the 130 watt one. This is a 50 watt one. This is a 150 watt one. And one of the reasons I wanted to get some, some tips for the, uh, and work station because sometimes I just need extra heat and I can use this uh, big one and other times 
this 50 watt one actually um i have tried it seems to have just as much power as this uh, 72 watt one because this heating element is even more efficient and then the one in there is uh, it is closer even closer to the tip and it seems to do a, a great job i was able to solder a, a thick piece of wire onto um, a true hole in the pcb just really easy like it, it felt like you know like a hundred watt iron but it's only it only consumes 50. So these are good and all the uh, suspect names uh, echo for instance has a soldering station based on these you know new technology type inserts um, but they are very expensive 529 dollars and let me see now same deal with weller this is a new technology type weller workstation 584 dollars and then there is jbc same deal 490 50 and it doesn't even include the tip um, the JBC one seems to be the most similar to the uh, to the uh, Etan um, soldering line that I have, as far as I can tell. I did find um, this guy on uh, AliExpress, and um, this seems to be quite a good deal here. Have very similar looking inserts to the uh, JBC one, and they have a little LCD display, four settings, and um, they are $185 with three tips included. So I think this is um, not a bad deal for new technology soldering station. I haven't got this one i haven't tried it i do not know but it claims to have two seconds heating and um three set temperature storage settings same as the atom one for esd quick change solving iron tips and as you can see it's got the short reach from the tip to the so this all it looks pretty good but the reason i bought the um the, the atom um workstation is is because this is actually there the, the uh, website at then dot com um, I have communicated with them and they answer emails in proper English uh, so I feel good about the the company um, but where I got it is on AliExpress and as you can see they have this is the uh, one of them, the 50 watt tip that I have. And you can buy it either with the 50 watt tip or with the tweezers. And originally I got into this because I wanted the tweezers and these tweezers um, looked good enough. Try them, they, they work, they are fantastic. And I am just waiting for the, um, 150, 100. This one, I'm waiting for the uh, 130 watt handle to come. Anyway, I think that is um, pretty much all I've got for now. So, as I said, I'm just waiting for this um, 130 watt. Uh, soldering iron to come and then I'm going to do a full review on this guy here including the tweezers I also have a a larger tweezer insert that black part of the tweezers there pulls out and you can buy different uh, sizes this is a 2.2 that I, I bought there is a 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1
and the 051, which is the really teeny weeny one. Yeah, so if you like, um, hit the like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully I can do the other video next. And I've got a few other things in mind as well. So I'll see you guys later.